Welcome everyone. We'll get started in a minute. We're just going to give folks a minute to join us. Looks like a good crowd. We just up over a hundred already. Okay, good evening. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Marty Bryan. I'm the Senior Manager for Site Licensing for Kairos. And I'll be leading our discussion tonight. Uh, I'm happy to have this opportunity to share our company with you and give you all a chance to learn about our plans here at Oak Ridge. We like to start every meeting with our mission statement. So I'll go ahead and, and tell you what that is. It's Kairos Power's mission is to enable the world's transition to clean energy with the ultimate goal of dramatically improving people's quality of life while protecting the environment. Oak Ridge will play an important role in advancing that mission, and tonight we're going to tell you all about it. During our presentation, we'll provide an overview of the company, our technology, and specifically details on the Hermes project, which is a low power demonstration reactor planned for the East Tennessee Technology Park. You'll get to hear from our CEO and co-founder, Mike Laufer, along with members of the Kairos Power Executive Team. And we're also thrilled to have special guests with us tonight to help us share this story. Before I introduce our first speaker, we've got a few housekeeping items. And I'd like to turn it over to our marketing communications manager, Ashley Lewis, to share some additional information. Ashley. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Marty. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, I get the privilege of sharing with you something very cool that I'm excited to announce. I'm going to put a link in the chat here. Um, to accompany this meeting, we have created a very nice virtual open house, which hopefully, if my screen can share. Can you see my screen, Marty? Yes, I can, Ash. All right, I'm hoping everyone can see that. So this is um, a virtual event space that we created to accompany this and other upcoming events that we're gonna be doing to help uh, people get to know our company and what we are doing in Oak Ridge. So I put the link in the chat. I hope everyone will hold on to it and take a look at this after the webinar is over. We have some really nice materials in here that you can interact with. There are some information sheets. There are a few different videos that you can click on and watch. Um, there are some really cool graphic banners, like every one of these elements is interactive. And so you can get a nice idea of everything we're working on and who we are. And it's a great opportunity to learn more about our company and maybe anything that we didn't have time to cover tonight during this presentation. The other thing I wanna draw attention to is this submit a comment feature in the bottom right corner. Uh, if for some reason we're not able to get to your question or if you think of something later that you want to address to uh, with us, um, please feel free to send us a comment through this form and our team will get back to you via email. So it's a great way for you to reach out to us. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to go over tonight is just for our presentation, we will be doing a Q&A at the end. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we will um, be collecting all the questions on the back end and going through as many as we can at the end of the presentation during our live Q&A session. Uh, we do have a few hundred people on this meeting, so I don't know if we'll be able to get to every single question tonight, <clears throat> excuse me. But if we are not able to, <coughs> excuse me, please feel free to put your email address with your question and we will follow up with you after the fact. Um, <clears throat> And with that, I'm going to get, turn it back to Marty before I lose my voice. Thanks, Marty. Okay, thanks for that, Ashley. So now I'd like to introduce our first speaker. It's Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally. Uh, he's long been a supporter for the Kairos Powers efforts in Tennessee, and we're grateful to have his work advancing the project. He couldn't be here with us live tonight, but he was kind enough to send us his pre-recorded remarks. So let's go ahead and play the tape of Lieutenant Governor McNally. This is Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally, and I would like to officially welcome Kairos to Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I'm sorry I could not be there with you today. Oak Ridge is the center of our nuclear innovation. I am grateful Kairos Power has chosen our community and our region. 
I greatly appreciate the work of all of our state and local officials and others to bring this project to fruition. They have been critical to bringing this project to our region. I know Kairos will be a strong part of our continued success story in Oak Ridge. Thank you and welcome Kairos. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, the next person I'd like to introduce is um, Mr. Woody. Uh, and he's a familiar face here at Oak Ridge. He's the county executive. He also could not be here tonight due to a scheduling conflict, but he kindly provided a video. So let's share that now as well. Hello, I'm Ron Woody, Roan County Executive. Welcome and thank you Kairos Power for choosing Roan County, Tennessee and the city of Oak Ridge for your investment in the next generation of nuclear power. The vision and planning for this next generation of energy in the form of the small modular reactor has been in the discussions for decades. But this past year, we have started seeing concrete evidence of true development in this industry as Kairos Power purchases a former property which was used in research and advancing nuclear technology and manufacturing or enriching uranium. We know that this investment is a big step for Kairos. Your leadership team, CEO Mike Lochter and Vice President of Regulatory Affairs Peter Hastings, who we have uh, come to know through presentations at ETEC, Mike and Peter and the other team, leadership team of Kairos has determined that the time is right. The technology is ready as the nation is transitioning to cleaner energy. The location is also right near one of the nation's premier national labs and also adjacent to a site which was a proposed TVA breeder reactor. It is also in a community that has worked in the nuclear business for decades with the Department of Energy and with the Tennessee Valley Authority nuclear power plants. This community has welcomed nuclear advancement of technology and energy. It is a welcoming community that has a knowledgeable workforce. The partnerships are also right. The Oak Ridge National Lab, the Tennessee Valley Authority, and also our education institutes with community colleges and the University of Tennessee that are uh, also producing uh, the next generation of nuclear workers. Kairos, thank you for your proposed $100 million investment and up to 55 high paying jobs. You're also one of our anchor tenants in the East Tennessee Technology Park, also known as Heritage Center. Thank you Kairos for playing a significant role in advancing nuclear technology and transitioning the United States to cleaner energy. From Roan County, Tennessee and the city of Oak Ridge, Welcome, Mike, Peter, and many others of the Kairos family. We stand ready to help you in the development of this next generation of energy. Thank you, Mr. Woody, for your kind words, and we're certainly grateful to have your support. Uh, next up, we do have a live guest. We're honored to have Oak Ridge City Manager, Dr. Mark Watson. And he was going to share his thoughts and perspective. And just like to say, we are, Kairos is very pleased to be partnering with the city and is thankful for their close cooperation to date. So, Dr. Watson, go ahead. Dr. Watson, you're muted. Anyway, thank you, Marty. It was, uh, it's great to be here with you tonight to celebrate this, uh, um, celebrate this occasion and uh, uh, and spread the information about Kairos Power. Um, 
our uh, mayor, uh, Warren Gooch, and city council express their best wishes uh, to the company as it uh, enters this next phase. Uh, we are certainly pleased to welcome you to uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And as a new neighbor, I think you're going to find that we are a community that's certainly rich in innovation and uh, past history, but also we're steeped in the science and discoveries of the future. Uh, as we look at working with the Oak Ridge National Lab, look at uh, working with the Y-12 uh, National Security Complex and many other related agencies, I think you're going to find that we are a great host city and you can't have a great host city without uh, uh, there being the commitment and dedication to science and, and, uh, and discovery that we have. I'd also like to point out that uh, our region has really concentrated on uh, educating our youth in the uh, uh, STEM programs. Oak Ridge was the first, uh, uh, first one in the state and certainly the Southeast United States that has STEM education from K through 12. And that accreditation is important for our, our future workers. And just look at that next time you're looking at a kindergartner and think about that a little bit. Um, you know, when uh, the city of Oak Ridge was contacted, uh, we thought we were a perfect match for uh, Kairos Power coming to our, uh, our community. The new technology uh, fits right into the uh, mission and mantra of our community. Uh, it's close to academic and professional resources. It provides not only the well-paid jobs that uh, uh, County Executive Woody just talked about, but it also provided a future for many of our existing residents and also for uh, uh, new residents that we hope will locate in our community. Uh, it complements the uh, Department of Energy EM mission of reindustrialization, which uh, started over 25 years ago and after many years of demolition and cleanup, we're now ready to go. And the first major tenant uh, is that of Kairos Power. So we are uh, welcome to continue uh, that particular uh, uh, dimension. You know, we'll have uh, partnerships and we view our partnership with uh, Kairos Power as something that we'll develop. Uh, in the past, I've had the opportunity to be a prototype community that deals with uh, everything from smart books to the first public library on uh, the uh, internet. It's hard to remember a time when that might occur. So as we look at the partnerships, we want to look at growing our uh, community and we want to utilize this uh, cleanup side as an example for repurposing and active reuse of uh, brownfields and other, uh, other areas uh, throughout our community. Uh, we are pleased with the attraction of the $100 million in proposed investment uh, for the building and equipment and land that uh, uh, Kairos will be involved with. And uh, we will look forward to uh, providing uh, additional services as we are looking at uh, a new Oak Ridge Airport which is a 5,000 foot runway that will be uh, uh, less than a mile from uh, the Kairos Power site. Uh, so you talk about having people come through and uh, look at and examine, this can be done on a quick basis once the, uh, uh, we look at this airport arrival in, uh, in spring of uh, 2025. Personally, I look forward to Kairos being a recognized part of uh, the Oak Ridge community. We look forward to you being engaged. We are a small community, but have the uh, attributes of a much larger community from theater to opera to differing uh, uh, aspects of community culture, as well as the natural uh, habitats and uh, flora and fauna that are throughout our, our region. Uh, many Many uh, things are available to welcome new and uh, future employees. And finally, we look forward to the training opportunities that may come out of Kairos Power being in our community. We think it's gonna be a great benefit to all. So uh, congratulations, and we're glad that you will be part of our new community.
Welcome, Kairos Power. Thank you, Dr. Watson. That was great. We, we really appreciate you being here tonight. And I can just echo some of your sentiments. I was smart enough to marry a girl from Oak Ridge. And so I've been coming here for over 40 years and can attest to the strong uh, science and education. And my father-in-law actually worked at the National Lab. So I can attest that it's certainly a great community and I'm excited for our company to be a part of it. So now I'd like to introduce a special guest, Dr. Kathy McCarthy, who's Associate Lab Director for the Fusion and Fission Energy and Science Directorate at Oak Ridge National Lab. Kairos is proud to be partnering with the lab on the Hermes Low Power Demonstration Reactor Project, and very fortunate to benefit from their deep nuclear knowledge and expertise. Dr. McCarthy, welcome. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Marty. And I want to say welcome on behalf of Oak Ridge National Laboratory. I think people are aware that Oak Ridge has a rich history of nuclear experience. It goes back over seven decades, and it includes the molten salt reactor experiment. Now, a little bit of history for you. The molten salt reactor experiment achieved its first self-sustaining nuclear reaction on June 1st, 1965. And Oak Ridge support to Kairos leverages the expertise that was first developed um, in the MSRE, the Molten Salt Reactor Exper uh, Experiment, as well as expertise that's, that's been developed since then. It's, it's interesting because there are multiple designs now that are actually looking at using molten salt. Uh, I had an opportunity today, the, the Secretary of Energy did a virtual visit to Oak Ridge. She's actually going through and, and doing virtual visits to the national labs rather than going in person because of the risk around COVID. And our partnership with Kairos is one of the specific partnerships that I mentioned to her. For us, and I think for national labs in general, connection with uh, companies such as Kairos who are taking what we're doing and actually using it in something real is key. And we wanna make sure that what we do is useful to you. So partnerships like this are really important to us. We are working on supporting Kairos on particle fuel testing, uh, particle, particle fuel testing analysis and scale up. And, and this is an area of expertise that, it, that Oak Ridge has, has been working on for some time. And fuel in general is key to the overall safety and economics of a nuclear reactor. So we're really happy to be engaged in that. There's multiple other areas that we're working with Kairos on as well. Oak Ridge really considers Kairos an important partner. And one of the things that, that I really appreciate about Kairos is that they understand that they can embrace innovation and still meet their schedule. And as a matter of fact, ultimately, I think it benefits their schedule. And, I, and I'll give you an example of something that we did together with um, Kairos. We worked on a 3D printed closed pump impeller. So what was kind of um, interesting about this is, is several things. It had to withstand temperatures up to 600 degrees centigrade. That's challenging. But one of the things that we wanted to show was rapid manufacturing turnaround. Typically when you manufacture a part and you wanna do changes, it can take up to three or four months to actually make a change to the initial design. Well, we can actually do that in, in 24 hours. So just the ability to, to work with Kairos on this, to demonstrate this, I think is really important. And demonstrations like this paved the way to innovations in, in nuclear energy technology and honestly, even for fusion energy, which has a lot to learn in terms of embracing these sorts of things. Now, one of the other things too, is as we hire people, this is a really exciting time for those of us in the nuclear reactor industry. And I, and I think really probably, so I've been in the industry a long time, I won't tell you exactly how long, but <laughs> the, the first time where we've got nuclear energy really at the forefront of the administration, the recognition of how important it is for meeting uh, climate change mitigation, min mitigation goals, so for us to be involved in this is, is great. And as we've been hiring staff, these sorts of relationships, specifically our relationship with Kairos is one of the things that we talk about. And I've heard from a number of our early and mid-career staff that they're really excited to come here and work because they have a goal to see an advanced reactor come online. And they're really thrilled to be a part of this. So as we move forward, we're all excited about Kairos being successful here and are very happy to be engaged and doing what's needed to help move it forward. So thank you really for coming to the Oak Ridge community. And by the way, I would tell you that it is a very welcoming community. I've been here for about a year and a half now, although all under COVID, so it's been a little bit odd. But 
definitely um, a, a great place to work. So you pick the right, you pick the right location. So thank you and welcome. Thank you, Dr. McCarthy. We're very glad to have your support and great for you being here tonight. That was very helpful. So now before we do our main presentation, just want to remind everyone that you can submit questions using the chat feature. And if we don't get to them today, uh, we will follow up, but you can also submit them through the virtual event platform that I, Ashley was talking about earlier. So without further ado, I'd like to get to our main presenter this evening. It's uh, Dr. Mike Lawfer, our CEO and co-founder of Kairos. He's a big part of the reason we're all here. And I know you're gonna enjoy hearing his perspective on the progress Kairos Power has made so far. So Mike, I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Mari. Let me give me just a moment to set up my uh, screens for the presentation mode. Um, I, I have to say that was an, an incredibly warm welcome um, from everyone in, in, in Tennessee, as well as the Oak Ridge community. Um, I, I've been, been traveling pretty regularly to Oak Ridge since my, my days as a graduate student, uh, working with a number of people at the lab uh, and at the Scanning through the participant list, seeing a lot of familiar names from the community, good, good friends and colleagues on that list as well. Uh, and of course, the, the welcoming nature of, of Oak Ridge and, and Tennessee more broadly uh, is, is one of the aspects that's made, uh, made this location really uh, such an easy choice in, in, in my mind for, for where Hermes should, should go. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit now. I'm going to go through a presentation. I apologize for running slides and, and not showing my face, but I think it'll be useful to, to show some pictures um, my goal really here is to introduce Kairos. There's not going to be enough time to, to dive into uh, all the details, although I really, I, I enjoyed some of the technical details that, that Kathy was able to, to run into from our collaboration with Oak Ridge. Um, but I think it's important to note that this is really um, an introduction to Kairos. Uh, and uh, we, we are really looking forward to a much broader and deeper engagement uh, as we go through early phases in, the, in this project. And then of course, as as a, as a participant in the community directly uh, as we stand up operations uh, in, uh, in East Tennessee Technology Park uh, in a couple of years. So let me pull up my slides and I will Okay. So here we go. Uh, so this is the public overview and today is uh, September 28th, uh, 2001 or 2021. All right, so Marty had uh, started the meeting by, by citing our mission um, and uh, I'll follow the, that practice. Uh, our mission is to enable the world's transition to clean energy. Oh, actually, before I start, let me introduce the Kairos Power Executive team <laughs> um, uh, who are on the call and then they're available to help in the, the, the question and answer before I dive in here. So uh, on the call, uh, we have uh, my co-founders, uh, uh, Per Peterson, uh, previously at UC Berkeley, uh, and Ed Blanford from University of Mexico, New Mexico. Uh, we've been working on this technology uh, for, for 15 years together, starting in the university context. Uh, and so and they, I know that they have a number of, of very strong connections uh, to the Oak Ridge community as well. Uh, and then the broader team, which we've, we've grown uh, in the years since, we have Mark Paris, our Vice President of Engineering, uh, Peter Hastings, our Vice President of Quality, uh, uh, Regulatory Affairs and Quality, uh, Lou Martinez, uh, Vice President of Strategy and Innovation. Uh, and then I believe, um, I, the, not able to make it, but Jeff Olson is our uh, Vice President of um, uh, uh, Business Development uh, as well. So uh, we're on the call. Uh, also Katie Dignan, my Chief of Staff, who's been very closely connected to a lot of our activities in Oak Ridge as well. Uh, and so they'll be available to help answer questions uh, when we get to that part of the, the meeting, as, as well as in the broader engagement for, for questions. Um, so coming back to, uh, to the mission, uh, it's what drives everyone at Kairos every day, uh, trying to work as, as quickly as we can to enable the world's transition to clean energy uh, with the ultimate goal uh, to dramatically improve people's quality of life while protecting the environment. That's a very big mission, um, but uh, everything that we're doing uh, each day uh, is trying to get us closer there. And I think um, the, the second point here, which is really essential, is uh, in order to achieve the mission, uh, we're focused on developing a clean energy technology that is affordable and safe. And in our view, these are the most important attributes for something that is going to be successful in the commercial marketplace. And that's ultimately going to be necessary for us to, to both be a successful company, but also to, to achieve uh, the mission as well. Um, 
we know that nuclear technology has a very strong track record, obviously deep, deep historical connections uh, to East Tennessee and uh, the Oak Ridge uh, area in, you know, specifically. Um, but in, in our view, the way that nuclear power exists today, it's clean, it's safe, it's reliable, um, but it's, it's not really affordable uh, as an option you know, for what's available right now. And so Kairos is really focused on trying to address that issue, as well as ensure that our technology is safe so that we can, uh, we can scale it and actually have an impact at a much larger scale. So um, understanding the commercial drivers and the commercial opportunities is actually really important because that's necessary for Kairos uh, to, to have that target. Uh, and so I'll, I'll give kind of the introduction before I describe uh, the company. Um, the name Kairos, uh, it's, it's a concept that comes from, from ancient Greek, uh, meaning the right or opportune moment. And for us, uh, the, the drive to uh, take our efforts, which is really uh, you know, focused at, at, in the research activities around universities with strong collaborations with, with national laboratories, including Oak Ridge, um, but, but spinning that out into uh, a true commercial effort, uh, it really came when we recognized what we believe is, is a singular opportunity in the US electricity market. And so, um, this, this figure is very central for, for Kairos and, and aligns to a much more specific target about what we're trying to do. Um, this is uh, from the uh, Energy Information Agency. They collect data on uh, US uh, energy systems. Uh, and this is, a, this is a figure that shows the mix of different type of energy generation in the United States based on when the plants came online, when they started operating and the different fuel types. And there are lots of interesting things to dive into on this. Um, but the, when we look at this, the standout feature that's clear is that huge orange spike uh, between 2000 and 2005. And that's when we built out about 200 gigawatts of natural gas capacity, uh, very, uh, you know, a huge amount of capacity in a very short period of time. For reference, that's about twice as much capacity as the, the just under 100, 100 nuclear reactors that are currently operating in the US. Uh, and, and we built that out over such a small period. This was followed by low natural gas prices. Uh, and so this is really the most important driver in the US energy markets right now. It's creating pressure on every other type of generation, including you know, existing nuclear plants. We read about new, you know, existing nuclear plants um, struggling to compete economically, uh, as well as coal plants. So the, uh, the decline in coal generation over the last 15, 20 years is really being, being driven by, by this trend with natural gas. So when we looked at this, we thought, well, how long are these natural gas plants going to last and, and what's going to replace them? Uh, and so um, you know, we, we, we made some, some of our, you know, some rough guesses, but the honest answer is no one really knows because because every, every prediction about the energy markets in, in 30 or 40 years is going to be wrong. Um, but our best guess is you know, 30 to 40 years. Uh, and um, the, the answer is that there's an opportunity for a new technology to make a really big impact in the market if it's the most economically attractive technology that's available uh, to utilities in the United States. So this is our goal, and this is what drives us uh, in terms of schedule. Kathy mentioned um, schedule is important to us. We need to be ready to meet this opportunity, and that's what translates back to everything that we're doing right now, including the development of the Hermes reactor, which we're gonna talk uh, a lot more about. So this is kind of the foundation to what Kairos is trying to do, uh, and it's important to keep that in mind because uh, in our view, having that commercial target is really is really necessary. So now introducing Kairos itself, and this is really just the, the, the shortest introduction uh, to, to who we are. Um, so we are a relatively new uh, nuclear energy engineering design and manufacturing company. Uh, I think one of the things that makes us somewhat unique in this space is that we are singularly focused on one technology that we're trying to, to commercialize and get to the market as quickly as we can. Uh, we've been at this for uh, almost five years uh, in the private setting, but that's, that was building on essentially uh, over a decade's worth of work of development uh, in universities and national laboratories uh, prior to that. Um, currently, we're about 210 employees. Uh, we are growing uh, at a pretty good and steady clip, uh, and we are an engineering heavy organization, about 90% engineering staff. So on the right side, you can see a, a picture of our headquarters uh, at Alameda Point in, in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, this is a, renovate, a, a restored uh, old uh, aircraft hangar uh, on the Navy base there that we use for uh, our offices as well as uh, testing facilities. Um, we've been growing our infrastructure. I'll talk a bit more about that. 
Uh, and then you can see kind of the team or a snapshot of the team a while back. Um, you know, we have been operating um, mostly remote uh, for the last year and a half or so uh, during, during the pandemic. Uh, but we have had teams on the ground uh, in our site, all of our sites, uh, pushing forward with uh, different type of, of testing activities as well as uh, manufacturing and construction activities. So I have to, to give tremendous credit to the Kairos team for keeping things moving forward under, under difficult, difficult circumstances in the pandemic, uh, but we've been able to, to keep our pace of progress uh, to be quite, quite high. Um, I, I think you know, defining the company, it really comes down to our commercial drivers. Uh, as I mentioned, we are targeting to, to be uh, the most competitive source of, of energy period in the US market. Uh, that means that we need to be competitive with natural gas in today's market. Uh, so that's a very aggressive economic target, but one that we're determined to meet. Uh, and then for schedule, uh, we're really driven to, to see commercial demonstration of our technology uh, no later than 2030 in order to enable a pretty significant uh, deployment ramp uh, in the following decade in the 2030s. And we think that this is, this is a realistic timetable um, that, that makes sense for us to work through the development that's necessary. Uh, the Hermes reactor is a really big, important early step in, in that process and in that trajectory. Uh, but recognizing where we're going from there uh, and where it stands in our process is, is really essential. So I mentioned uh, that Kairos has been investing in infrastructure uh, the last uh, couple of years, and, and that infrastructure is really necessary for us to be able to move quickly, recognizing that, that there are different aspects about our technology that are going to require different types of facilities to enable that. So if I take a look at the uh, our current footprint for Kairos, uh, we're, we're relative, we're, we're spread out over a number of different locations. Uh, most of our staff is uh, between our, our, our three uh, sites that we operate, uh, including Alameda, I mentioned, in California. That's uh, our headquarters, as well as we have two labs there, uh, our Rapid Lab and our S Lab, designed for uh, rapid iteration and prototyping and manufacturing and testing. Uh, we've expanded uh, in the last two years uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We have uh, both uh, our larger scale testing facilities there, uh, as well as a manufacturing development facility uh, that, that we're, we're expanding those capabilities today. And then we also have uh, an office in Charlotte, which is primarily focused around licensing activities. Uh, and that team, of course, travels quite a bit to other Kairos locations, as well as Washington, DC, uh, for our engagement with the regulator. Um, I'm excited to include Oak Ridge on this, uh, on this map now for the Hermes reactor. Uh, and then uh, it, it's also, uh, uh, we have a partnership with Materion, uh, they're they're a key partner uh, for the for a key supplier for us, uh, and so in as part of the infrastructure, also standing up uh, a facility to 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 provide the salt, which is a key component for our technology, uh, uh, expanding on their their infrastructure in Elmore, Ohio. So, so we've invested in this infrastructure, uh, but what are we trying to do, uh, and why do we think we have a shot of um, doing what many have tried to do in terms of lowering the costs to deploy nuclear technology? So. I'm going to introduce the technology because it's it's really essential for, for a number of, of reasons. One, it, it's it's central to, to what Kairos is trying to do, and, and it's what we're focused on as a company. Um, it's really important to those two attributes that I mentioned in terms of what our goals are, developing technology, which is safe. The technology really is the foundation of our safety case, uh, and it also is very closely linked to the economic potential of, of the technology. And I guess further in this context, both the, of our key technologies are are deeply rooted with work uh, in East Tennessee and connected to work uh, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So uh, the technology basis I mentioned, we're focused on one particular type of reactor technology. It's the fluoride salt cool with high temperature reactor, fluoride salt cool with high temperature reactor or known as the FHR. And it really is the combination of two uh, proven relatively mature nuclear technologies, but combining them in what we believe is a new and innovative way. So. Um, and both of these technologies have, have, have roots uh, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. The first one is the fuel. So, so Kairos uses what's known as TRISO or coated particle fuel. This is the most robust nuclear fuel that's ever been developed. Uh, Oak Ridge played a role, uh, a significant role in, in reestablishing the capability to manufacture this fuel in the United States and is actively testing this. And uh, both in, in, in Idaho, there's been a qualification program. And right now, actually, Kairos is a partnership with Oak Ridge where we're testing this fuel uh, in the hyper reactor uh, to see uh, to see how much energy we can actually get out of it. It is it is very robust uh, and really provides the foundation of 
of, of the safety case for the reactor because of its ability to essentially contain everything, all the fission products inside these tiny particles. They're basically these, these tiny poppy sized seed um, uh, balls of uranium with various coatings. And for the Kairos reactor, we deploy them uh, in pebble form. So our, our pebbles are a little bit smaller than the pebbles that were historically developed. Ours are about the size of golf balls. Uh, and in the Hermes reactor, there'll be about 36,000 of these things uh, floating up pretty gently in the salt system uh, circulating through. The other part of our technology, which again connects to what, uh, one thing that Kathy mentioned, uh, is combining uh, these particles or these particles with uh, salt coolants, uh, specifically fly, which is a combination of lithium fluoride and beryllium fluoride. Uh, the picture on the bottom right is a is a pretty classic historic historical picture uh, from the Oak Ridge program. Uh, the main figure in there is, is a picture from the Kairos facility. Um, these coolants were developed for reactors that had the fuel actually dissolved in the coolant. And so uh, it provides a very effective backup barrier for, for, you know, um, for anything that might get released from, from the fuel, which um, is, you know, it provides kind of defense and depth from that perspective. Um, but it's also a really good agent for moving heat. And it's, it's been proven, uh, as, as Kathy mentioned, on the operation with the molten salt reactor experiment uh, in the late 60s. So Kairos is trying to combine these technologies, uh, which have, have not historically been combined. And the, the key thing for us is that the combination of these two technologies really builds a huge amount of intrinsic safety into the technology. And what that allows us to do is to dramatically shrink the physical footprint of the plant, which is necessary uh, to, to ensure that, that the plant can operate uh, and protect the public uh, as well as, as the plant operators. And so in, in this sense, the kind of the, the the aspects of, of the safety case and the economic potential for the reactor are very closely linked. And we feel that we've really selected a technology that has unique economic opportunity uh, and one that we think is, is well suited for us to, to be able to, to achieve our mission. Um, so that Kathy had mentioned and I had mentioned as well, uh, I think it's important to note that um, these are both proven, proven nuclear technologies uh, including the molten salt reactor experiment. This is a, a look down into, uh, into the containment vessel for that reactor system. Uh, and as Kathy mentioned, um, uh, critical uh, in 65. So we're, uh, we're about uh, 55 years out and, and Kairos is looking to, uh, to get Hermes critical as close to the 60th anniversary of that uh, criticality in 65 as, as we can. So uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Kairos's approach to technology development and how the Hermes reactor specifically fits into that approach. Um, and then I think we should have a good amount of time for, for questions uh, uh, in, in the general session. Um, so one thing that's pretty important Kairos is that um, we recognize that uh, we need to think about a new way of looking at developing uh, nuclear technology. Uh, and uh, this really requires a, 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 what, we, what we view as a paradigm shift uh, away from the conventional nuclear development cycle. And uh, in the conventional nuclear development cycle, there's this, this iterative process of plan, design, build, test. And then you take that test experience back uh, to, to learn and improve the technology. Now in the nuclear development uh, process, this is a very long, very slow, and very expensive process. So it's 20 plus years if you're lucky, many billions of dollars of investments. Uh, and I would say that unfortunately, um, because of the scale of, of, of the projects and the inability to kind of prove economically that they make sense, you know, nuclear has ended up in this internal loop of planning and designing. So, so Kathy mentioned you know, the excitement uh, from, from, from many people at Oak Ridge to, to, to move faster, to get, uh, to get a, a demonstration reactor built. Uh, we believe that's really important so that we can get that test experience and then work to further improve uh, uh, both the, the economics and the operation of, of, of our technology. So what Kairos is trying to do in a very real way is we're trying to shrink um, both the, the scale and the cost and the time associated with these, these iterations uh, and to do that in a, in a thoughtful way that allows us to demonstrate our technology uh, in a way that makes sense for, for what we can deliver quickly now and to learn lessons for how we can improve how we deploy that technology in the future. So Hermes plays a very important role in this. 
Um, but it's it's actually not the first role because we recognize that, that deploying any type of nuclear technology is going to take a longer time because of the, the nature of the technology and uh, being regulated in a, in a very thorough way. And that's appropriate, but it also means that it's very hard to move quickly when you're dealing with, with nuclear technology. So early on, we recognize the need for non-nuclear uh, demonstrations and iterations. And so actually our first, when we look at kind of the major iterations for Kairos, the first one that we're working on and we're working to build right now in our Albuquerque facility is what we call the engineering test unit. And so it's a non-nuclear um, integrated demonstration of many of the systems and components that are exactly the same scale that they're going to be need for the Hermes reactor. But, it, but because it's not a reactor system, we've been able to move much more quickly in the design, development, and manufacturing and testing of components to go into that. So Kathy mentioned that, that, that component for the pump. That's going into the pump for the engineering test unit. Um, when we start that up uh, early next year, we'll get real operational experience for that pump. And that will then feed back into how we can improve it uh, when, we, when we scale to the Hermes reactor. And getting that experience, uh, both the operating experience, but also validating the costs of, of how, you know, how quickly we can do things and how much they're gonna cost is, is very unusual and gives us a lot more confidence that we can proceed to the next step. And for us, the next major iteration is uh, the Hermes low power demonstration reactor. It will be a nuclear system. Uh, it's being designed to achieve a, a thermal power of 35 megawatts of heat generation. And the, you know, the singular mission of that, of that demonstration is to prove our capability to deliver uh, affordable nuclear heat. Uh, and so, so this is really kind of a big step, um, but it, it establishes that, that Kairos will actually be able to deliver our technology uh, at the cost that we need to to be competitive to, make, to, to meet those market opportunities uh, and on schedules that are uh, our future customers will be able to, uh, uh, to to actually believe in this process, and that's a very that's a very high bar. Beyond that, we have additional iterations. Uh, we don't foresee Hermes as being our, our primary uh, product offering, so we do call it a low power demonstration. Um, but but buying into that that iterative development process, we see value in going back to the scaling uh, of non nuclear facilities. So the U facility uh, is envisioned to be a full scale non nuclear. Uh, iteration for the commercial technology. You can see the relative scale of the commercial uh, uh, system relative to the Hermes reactor vessel here. Uh, and then finally, uh, we go back to the to the commercial offering, uh, which we envision to be uh, about 140 megawatt electric uh, uh, per, per reactor. And so, so this process allows us to, to move faster uh, and to actually get, get real learning along the way. And so the ability to move faster in these earlier uh, demonstrations is, is key because there's still a lot of work to do in order to, to meet our overall commercial and schedule targets. And so making sure that we, uh, we, we take those, those lessons appropriately uh, and we, we, we actually are able to execute them before we, before we work to scale up allows us to do so with, with much more confidence in, in what we're doing. Um, I'll make one additional note that the, it's really important for us to be thoughtful about the appropriate scale uh, for the different, uh, the different steps in this process. Uh, the engineering test unit, um, uh, I, I believe that we've made the correct choice about, about the scale of that facility. It's very comparable to the scale of the Hermes facility. Uh, for reference, it, it will be the largest uh, fly system ever built and operated. It has about 50% more salt in it than any of the historical tests at Oak Ridge. And our ability to do that in a non-nuclear system has allowed us to move much more quickly and to gain that experience, which gives us confidence that we'll be able to go and execute the Hermes project uh, when, we're, when we move to do that uh, in just a couple of years. So I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit about um, what, what Hermes is envisioned to be. Um, and um, I know there'll be quite a few questions about this, um, uh, both in this meeting, as well as in the following conversations. Uh, this is our artistic rendering of uh, Hermes uh, at the K33 site. Um, so to give you a sense of, of scale for the facility, uh, it's, it's a modest size facility. The footprint here is, is um, you know, about 10 acres or so of the, the 100 or so that, that we've acquired uh, in East uh, Tennessee Technology Park. Um, but in general, this is a scale that's, that's comparable to our facilities uh, in New Mexico uh, and uh, California. So it's a scale that, that we're comfortable working at. Um, I mentioned that the power level for Hermes will be 35 megawatts. 
um, that's um, uh, well, it's, it's a little bit more than than, than one tenth uh, the power level for a commercial reactor. Uh, and so, uh, but it's also bigger than than the historical molten salt reactor experiment, which was about seven megawatts uh, on the Oak Ridge side. So for us, it's the right size for for demonstrating our technology. Um, I already kind of covered where it fits in our development path. Um, the mission of, of Hermes really is to, to prove that Kairos can, can actually deliver affordable nuclear heat. Um, doing that uh, in East Tennessee makes a huge amount of sense to us. Uh, the partnership opportunities with Oak Ridge National Laboratory as well as uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority really make it a rich environment for us to, uh, to, to come into and to have great partners to do that. Um, and uh, for, for us, really, um, the ability to, to deploy Hermes is, is, um, is a way for us to establish that, 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 that it is possible to, to deploy uh, nuclear technology uh, faster um, and at lower cost than, than many people believe possible. Uh, and you know, we're, we're, we're thrilled to be coming to the Oak Ridge uh, community and East Tennessee. Um, you know, the collaborations that are possible there uh, the, the tremendous workforce in the region. Uh, we know they'll be able to support this project. And then the, looking ahead, uh, we know that, that there is potential for expansion and growth uh, in the community. And all of those combined make, make Oak Ridge uh, really the, uh, just the right site for us to, to come to. And it's, it's, it's really heartening to, to have such a warm welcome from, uh, from the local community and, and the leaders uh, in the community. Um, I will, uh, I'll make a note here also um, so, so Hermes will be located on you know, Kairos owned and operated facility, Kairos owned property. So the Hermes reactor, you know, while we have deep connections to Oak Ridge, it will be a private facility uh, owned and operated by Kairos, uh, and it will be regulated uh, by uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, and so Kairos has been engaged deeply with them uh, for the last several years. Uh, and uh, for us, we believe that, that, that uh, that's an important part of the process for what we need to do. Uh, to make sure that what we're doing uh, ensure that we're protecting the health and safety of the public. It's also important for us to demonstrate that we can go through that process to prove to our future customers uh, that it is possible to license this technology, um, and which is very different from the technologies that they're familiar with. And so uh, that's also a key part of the process that, that we're working through. I'll close out here with um, just a, a, a little bit of a snapshot about where Kairos is right now. Uh, and and this is this is this is very much right now. So it's important to to note that things are you know Kairos is moving fast, and so so these snapshots will change pretty quickly. Um, in terms of of internal work and milestones, um, we've been building not just the infrastructure, but we've been using that infrastructure uh, to start the 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 early development uh, and scaling of our technology to to get to. Um, you know, demonstrating the the operability of different components and systems that are ultimately going to be necessary for uh, for Hermes to operate. Uh, we've been doing that uh, in in our R lab and S lab uh, in in California. Uh, the expansion into Albuquerque uh, for our, our uh, testing facility, uh, as well as the manufacturing facilities there, and then more recently with the site selection uh, of of Oak, of Oak Ridge for for the Hermes reactor. So these are so so internally we're we're keeping a tremendous pace here in terms of what we're doing uh, to move things forward. Um, externally, there's also a number of key engagements that I think are important to highlight here. Uh, the first I, I mentioned, uh, the Hermes reactor will be um, uh, regulated by the Nuclear Regulatory Com Commission. Uh, and so uh, as part of that process, we've been engaging with them for, uh, I believe, the last three years or so. We've been submitting reports, having reviews with the staff, uh, and getting determinations on, on key aspects of the technology, uh, but really preparing them to, to understand um, what our technology looks like and why we believe it will be safe to deploy. Uh, Kairos is getting very close to submitting the construction permit for, uh, for the Hermes reactor, uh, which is a key step in that process. Uh, it's important to note that, that just kind of you know, um, your quirks in the process, um, the, construction, the purpose of the construction permit review is really to assess the, the, the suitability of the site and a preliminary assessment of the hazards that, that the reactor might pose. It's, it's not actually a statement that Kairos is ready to, to go out and build. Uh, we have quite a bit more work to do on the design. Uh, right now, our timeline is targeting uh, starting construction in 2023 for the Hermes reactor. 
Um, we'd like to get it uh, online and operational by 2026. And so we've communicated that timeline, um, but we're, we're making sure that we're engaged uh, in the regulatory process that can support uh, that, which is a pretty fast timeline uh, compared to, to past projects in the nuclear space. Um, additionally, um, almost a year ago, Kairos was selected by the Department of Energy to receive uh, a, a risk reduction award as part of the Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program. Uh, there's been, been more attention, I would say, to the two larger scale commercial demonstration projects. Uh, but Kairos, uh, as part of that, uh, that award, um, will we'll cost share a project of over $600 million, including um, uh, over just over $300 million of funding uh, from, from the Department of Energy. Uh, that work is, is specifically to enable the development, construction, and commissioning of the Hermes reactor, uh, and also significantly uh, is there to support uh, significant levels of collaboration uh, with a number of partners, including Oak Ridge National Laboratory uh, as part of that, that project. Um, and then uh, more recently, earlier this year, um, Kairos completed a cooperative development agreement uh, with the Tennessee Valley Authority uh, to support uh, collaboration activities for a Hermes deployment. Uh, we've been working on that process with them for a number of months, uh, getting gaining from their experience uh, in the region uh, and understanding the specifics of the site and uh, supporting us uh, in a number of, of, of key areas there as well. Uh, and so I'd say it supports, you know, this is a really important relationship for us specifically because we're coming into to East Tennessee and, and into their service territory, uh, but it also has helped for us to understand the perspective of different types of utilities and understanding their process and their concerns early allows us to, to, to make sure that we're, uh, we're addressing the commercial concerns and gives us, gives us a better uh, chance of, of developing and deploying a commercial fleet of these reactors uh, down the road in the future. Um, I think taken as a whole, um, you know, I'm tremendously proud of the work that, that the Kairos team has, has done uh, in just a short period of time. I believe that we are, we are moving, um, I would say, incredibly fast, especially um, uh, in the context of trying to figure out how to uh, uh, innovate quickly in the nuclear space. Um, I, think we can, I, think, I think we have opportunities to go even faster. Uh, and uh, the, you know, the collaborations and, and getting to Hermes gives us a really good target uh, as an organization for, for where we're trying to go. And we're trying to get there quickly and one that will uh, ultimately um, provide really direct and significant value to, um, to establish that we can actually deploy this technology uh, at larger scale and, and have an impact in the US electricity market and uh, um, really have, a, have, a, have an impact to, to achieve our mission. With that, I will um, end my presentation. I'll point out two, two places where you can go for a, a bit more information. The first is our website. Uh, and then the second one is the link to the open house that Ashley uh, presented at the uh, beginning of the meeting. Um, so, so these are places where you can, can learn more. On our website, there is a Tennessee tab, which has, um, I would say, a first pass at a, a Q&A. Um, so, so questions that, that we figured would come up and we, we wanted to, to just provide answers for. Uh, but there will be an opportunity to, for additional questions to be submitted. Uh, and we, we'll use that as an as important public forum for, for sharing information. That said, I'll just, I'll just reiterate the point that um, you know, Kairos is really thrilled to be uh, coming into East Tennessee and joining, uh, joining the Oak Ridge community. Um, you know, we, we couldn't think of a better place for, for Hermes. And uh, we're really excited to, to get going on this project. And um, uh, it, it really is a, a key part of our, our overall development and commercial strategy. Uh, and we're you know, this, this, this warm welcome from the community is really heartening. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, we've gotten a lot of good questions in from both before the uh, presentation and during. So we'll try to get to as many as we can here. So I'll read the first one. Um, John asks, what is expected operating lifetime of Hermes? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, so uh, I would say um, if we look back historically about reactors that, that do the types of thing that Hermes is intended to do, um, we, we actually have to be pretty, pretty modest and realistic. Um, so I think of two examples. One is the MSRE in Oak Ridge. The other one is the actually the General Electric Balasitos reactor, which is not so far from 
uh, from where, where, where we are in California right now. Um, those reactors typically operate for about five years and maybe about one to two years of, of effective full power life. So I think for Hermes to achieve its mission to demonstrate nuclear heat, um, we are really looking at a short time scale for, for lifetime. That being said, obviously making the investments in a reactor is much, so I believe we can achieve the mission of Hermes in that time window, but making the investment in a reactor, there's, there's a strong set of incentives to, to get, get more value out of that. So uh, we're, we're planning for potentially longer operating lifetime, um, but going back to the, iter the, the iterative design philosophy, we would expect to make changes in the system uh, and um, there is there is opportunity to to have it pr provide other missions and provide other support over longer period. I would say, think think of it kind of roughly as as providing most of its life, uh, you know, over no more than a decade. But in terms of really providing the value that that we need to demonstrate our costs, where we're really looking for uh, probably about achieving that within the first couple of years of operation. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, the next question is actually something that um, Dr. Watson alluded to about the airport. And uh, Benjamin wants to know, will the city's proposed airport nearby affect the Kairos power development either positively or negatively? And if so, how? Um, so so I, I think that um, we, first off, we've, we've had to look into potential safety um, uh, intersections in terms of, of having the airport located so close. So from the perspective of, of intersection with Kairos needs, the airport, um, doesn't have a significant impact about what Kairos is planning to do uh, in, in East Tennessee Technology Park. Um, that said, um, you know, you know, it, the, the regional airport to allow for, for travel back and forth, um, that's nice, although I think that, that um, it, what Kairos is doing is expensive, but we're definitely not a, um, a it's, pretty, it's pretty expensive travel, <laughs> traveling by, uh, by private flights. So uh, I, I would expect, um, you know, Right, right now we want to be we want to be you know conscious about our resources and so um, if it can allow people to get there more easily that's great uh, locally um, but I think that you know that that's a nice it's a very nice factor to have um, close by um, but I, I don't I don't think it'll have a huge impact either either good or bad on, on Kairos's activities. Okay, thank you. So here's a a sort of a question and observation from Trent that's uh, going back in history a little bit, indicates that some 40 years ago, one of the individuals who had worked on the MSR at Oak Ridge indicated that one of the reasons the MSR was not pursued were the utilities were uninterested in the concept because it looked too much like a chemical plant. What comments have you had from utilities on Kairos? Sure. Um, so, so uh, there, there are obviously people in the Oak Ridge community who, 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 who know the history of, of the successes and um, you know, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the promise that that program ended with uh, uh, historically. Um, Kairos has, has tried to to recognize that that our technology does look different from the reactors that that you know, are currently deployed, including the set of reactors that the. Uh, TVA operates uh, uh, in the region. Um, I would say that, that our, our reactor technology looks different than the fluid fuel and because we do use the solid fuel and that, that for us that actually provides a lot of simplifications in terms of the, the kind of gaining acceptance to operations. Uh, it does look more, more conventional and, and these types of, of uh, pebble bed reactors have operated successfully historically in Germany and uh, most recently, actually, the, the new reactor in China. So I would say that um, it, it looks more familiar to, 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 to our customers' utilities. Um, that said, um, it looks very different from what they're working on right now. And so um, part of the, the value of the, the iterative development process that I spent a lot of time talking about is it allows us to communicate with, with our potential customers, not just... Um, you know what we're going to offer them as, as a product in the future, but allows uh, allows them to build confidence uh, that we can operate these facilities, and, and that starts with a lot of our non-nuclear uh, uh, work uh, uh, prior to Hermes, uh, and and gaining that familiarity working with the systems is ultimately going to be necessary uh, before you take the step to, to to the nuclear system. So, 
socialization of the technology is very important uh, with, with utilities. Um, our technology looks very different, but we think that um, if we can really demonstrate that, that we're able to hit the cost targets necessary, that, that it will, you know, our, our goal is to be the most economically attractive um, a source of dispatchable energy, regardless of uh, what technology you're looking at. And we think that uh, that should be the driver for, uh, for why utilities should be interested in this technology in the future. Okay. Uh, next we have from Wolf, uh, two questions. First, how will the heat be used? And second, you know, since we're not producing power, what does it mean to get it, quote, online? So at the moment, there is no, um, there is no planned uh, useful uh, purpose for the heat that's going to be generated by Hermes. It will be, uh, it will, it will be, it will essentially be, be discarded to, to the environment um, and not used. So Hermes will not be used uh, to generate electricity. Um, that's uh, part of the process uh, for, for the classification of what we're going through uh, in the regulatory space. So it's, so it's a, it's a non-power reactor. Um, that said, the, the, um, you know, there's value in the development process or in, or in operations and you know, in the core itself that can provide value uh, beyond just the heat itself. Um, what was the other part of the question beyond the heat? Uh, what, is, what is meant by getting it online? Uh, <laughs> so, um, so as I said, um, you know, our, our goal is, is to, to see Hermes be operational uh, uh, by 2026. Uh, that's that's the, the timeline that essentially we've we've laid out uh, for um, you know, for the DOE project. Um, that's a pretty aggressive timeline, uh, but uh, pushing that forward and as I alluded to, trying to to get Hermes critical um, as 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 close as possible to, to the 60th anniversary of the MSRE uh, anniversary is a you know, it's an anniversary that's not lost on us. Although that's a you know, even by our standards, that's a pretty fast schedule. Okay, and then there was a couple of questions about the power output or the, the thermal output. Um, so James asked, and you touched on it a little bit earlier, but what do you do with the 35 megawatts of heat? And also Janaid wants to know, is 140 megawatts electric equal to uh, megawatts thermal? I think that's referring to the sort of the KPX reactors. Yeah, so they're good questions. So, so again, the the, the heat uh, produced by Hermes will not be used for for you know for, for any value adding purpose that, that we have planned right now. Um, the commercial reactor um, it will actually so so 140 megawatts is the electrical power output. Um, that is really said if we look at at kind of the market uh, trying to have a multi unit. Uh, commercial deployments uh, of four four reactors uh, to essentially be comparable to the size of uh, existing natural gas plants. That's where we get to there. Uh, but that commercial plant would be have a thermal output it would generate actually 320 megawatts of heat per reactor. Uh, and the conversion efficiency there is you know, it would be somewhere in uh, kind of the low the the low 40 40 percent uh, region which is significantly higher than the efficiency of, of the conventional uh, uh, reactors that are deployed right now. Their efficiencies are really in the low 30s. So that, that higher efficiency from having higher temperature uh, in the system is also a part of the, uh, the economic attractiveness of, of, of our specific technology. Right. Okay. Um, here's a good one for you, Mike, that I'm sure you get asked a lot. Why Hermes over other advanced reactor designs? <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I guess I alluded to this when I when I spoke to you know, the technology itself. Um, Kairos is the only um, is the only you know, reactor developer focusing on this combination of technologies. I would say um, the the primary barriers I would say are actually perceptions of costs around the fuel. And then also perceptions around uh, challenges in, in sourcing and working with the salts. Uh, these are both areas where Kairos believes that we have significant opportunities to do, do much better. Uh, and as, as I said, um, you know, the attractive aspect of these technologies is that they have extremely robust intrinsic safety characteristics. And so relying on 
just just the characteristics of of, of that that are intrinsically part of the fuel and coolant, um, it, it shifts the burden to to a smaller footprint about what's going to be necessary to build a, a reliable and safe uh, reactor. So, you know, I mentioned Kairos is, is Kairos will be the owner and operator of the Hermes reactor. Um, that places kind of a unique responsibility on us to, to ensure that we're operating the plant and protecting our staff on, at the facility. Um, we believe that that is in perfect alignment with, with what's necessary to protect the public. And that safety case, as I said, it allows us to, to, to reduce the costs of, of a lot of the big and expensive um, parts of, of conventional reactors that are, are you know, not needed or needed in different ways for our reactor because we're smaller, we have low pressure. Um, it, it's just a different type of system and relying on the robustness of those, those natural attributes is better than trying to engineer a lot of additional things uh, on top of it in our view. Okay. Uh, here's one that we touched on a little bit earlier that maybe you can just recap. Uh, Jason asked, how big and efficient will the reactor be? Uh, so, so as I mentioned, um, Hermes um, will be, um, I guess, how, so it'll be 35 megawatts. Uh, the footprint of Hermes on, on the site will be probably you know, 10 acres more or less. Um, so there's, there's plenty of additional room on, uh, on the site at, uh, uh, at the former site of the K33 enrichment plant. Um, the, I guess if we were to attach a, a, a power system onto Hermes, it would probably have an electrical output around 20 megawatts or so. Um, the, the commercial plant would be a bit larger, uh, but not dramatically larger. Uh, and um, that's actually important because it wouldn't necessarily take up a much bigger footprint uh, than, than the Hermes facility as well. Okay, great. Um, Doug has a question. Please address disposal, disposal of waste in deployed operation. All right, good, very good question. So um, th this, is, this is one of the, the issues that, that um, often comes up when people talk about a deployment of, 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 of reactor technology. So for us, there are a couple of factors here. Um, the first one is that, that Kairos has a responsibility to ensure that there is a disposition pathway for the fuel uh, from Hermes. Uh, that's actually a condition of being issued an operating license uh, to, to, to run the facility. Um, we believe that there are, there are solutions uh, in terms of uh, the pathway for, for the waste for Hermes. Um, it, that, could, that could be either basically um, following the model of, of, of this, the eventual solution of what's going to be necessary for the commercial fleet. And, and the volume of spent fuel from Hermes will be very small compared. So, so as an incremental burden in terms of, of the national need for, for solution for spent fuel, that's one aspect. I, you know, I, I think that this is an issue that can be a little bit complicated, but I think there are different options to responsibly manage um, uh, spent fuel. Um, many of the challenges of how to get there, I believe, are political in nature, um, you know, but there are, uh, there are a number of factors that are going into this process. Um, but I think there, there are multiple option pathways that, that make sense. One of the pathways is actually that the fuel from Hermes could actually be, um, be used uh, to actually generate additional energy in the commercial reactors down the road, in which case you know, I would assume that the deployment of the commercial fleet would have to include a, a broader set of solutions around, around the waste issue. Um, and in that case, Hermes wouldn't actually have its, it would have an, a, a completely coupled uh, pathway on, on that front uh, to the commercial fleet that would develop down the road. So I think that being said, but, but the, I think the point here that um, the, the additional spent fuel burden from Hermes you know, will be quite small. Um, particularly compared to the overall uh, spent fuel burden from, from the commercial deployment of the technology. Okay, um, here's another two-part question. It has to do with leakage of the salt coolant system. So Frederick wants to know, what is the design criteria for protection measures if there's a leak in the salt coolant system? And related okay. to that, I'll give you the second part after you answer that. <laughs> Okay, so so the question is 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 uh, design criteria uh, for yeah. uh, for leaks in the salt system. Um, so I, I think the first point, um, one of the advantages from the operational perspective of using the solid fuel is that that there's 
significantly less um, radioactive material in the salt than, than the fluid fuel concepts where, where the radioactivity is, is dissolved in the salt. So in terms of, of radiological hazard, um, leaks in, in the salt system are much, much, much lower consequence than, than the fluid fuel uh, systems. That said, this is a very hot, <laughs> uh, you know, we're talking very hot uh, temperature. Uh, and uh, there will be there will be other hazards associated with uh, being you know close proximity to, to the coolant. So for us, um, the the procedures and kind of the operational uh, aspects that are necessary to um, uh, to operate the plant here are really actually around ensuring the plant operators and the staff are protected. Uh, and so that has requirement. You know, so the system is low pressure. So first off, we wouldn't expect anything. Um, particularly catastrophic in terms of, of leaks. These are these are the experience historically from Oak Ridge is that that you tend to get smaller leaks and they they don't they uh, that experience is actually very helpful for us to kind of understand what what would actually happen as well as building our own internal uh, set of understanding about what what happens in those situations. But I think from our perspective, that's a, there's a need to protect the plant staff and and the operators. That 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 event actually has no actually has no significance in terms of consequence for uh, the, the general health and safety of the public beyond the plant. And actually um, you know, that event has, has from, from what we know right now about the design, has no significance in terms of impact on the public. That said, from our perspective, it has a pretty significant impact on our ability to operate the plants. And so right now the, the parameters around that are really focused around ensuring um, the safety of, of, of the plant staff from, from the hazards associated with the temperature uh, and, and the specific coolant itself. And there are a variety of different strategies that we would employ uh, in the plant to make sure that, that, that we're able to handle those circumstances uh, and, and you know, preserve the investment in the plant. Okay, and, and then kind of a follow on to that, we've got a lot of good technical engagement from the, uh, from the audience, so this is good. It's, uh, what is your backup cooling plan if the main coolant system fails? So a, a good question. Um, so I guess Oak, Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge is not, um, uh, yeah, uh, Oak Ridge is not a uh, your general uh, community coming into. There's 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 a lot of deep nuclear knowledge, and so I'll, I'll just recognize that fact as I, um, I you know, I'm, I'm I'm very happy to actually dive into a lot of these 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 technical questions. Um, so um, you know, the premise on the question. Um, one of, one of the, the aspects of, of nuclear technology, which is different, is that you can't just turn off a nuclear reactor. You, you shut it down, so you're gener you, and, um, but, but because of the fission, you're generating a, additional heat, and that heat will, will go down over time. And, and getting rid of that heat is uh, usually what's driving a lot of the requirements around uh, systems that are necessary to uh, ensure health and safety of, of of both the plant staff and the public, you know, at least in, in the in the way that kind of the nuclear regulatory environment is 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 set up. So for us, I think it's important to note that um, yeah, so so we are a big enough reactor so that we will have to have a system to remove that heat. Uh, the system that that we're designing and developing, uh, uh, it's important to note that it is a passive system, so it doesn't require electricity, doesn't require pumps. Uh, it essentially will boil water uh, during the initial uh, uh, period to, to remove that heat uh, before it, it would decay away. Uh, and then it will be at lower levels where really just, you know, um, uh, that heat being taken into the structures is, is enough. Um, so that's actually really important is that we don't want to add a lot of additional costs with a lot of um, systems that are important to safety. Uh, that those tend to be much more expensive. They have different types of regulatory and quality requirements. Uh, for us, having a, a relatively simple uh, passive system that doesn't require electricity uh, is essential um, to, to be able to keep the cost of the reactor technology low. And um, Kyrus is not the only advanced reactor vendor that has these types of, of systems in place. But for us, there, there is a, 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 a decay heat removal system that will essentially boil off water uh, to, to, to remove that heat. Okay. Uh, now we have a question about the site. And Russell wants to know, are there any challenges with the Hermes site? Is it a greenfield or can you only build above grade? Uh, so uh, a, a very good question. So it is a brownfield site. 
Um, and there are some, some limitations in terms of what we can do in terms of digging. Um, uh, and, and if we go down too deep, uh, you know, as part of the conditions, we have to get that reviewed and approved by, uh, by the Department of Energy uh, based on kind of their remediation of the past uses of the site. Um, that said, there's also an existing infrastructure of some, some, some of the foundations uh, from the prior structures that are left in place. Uh, so based on that, uh, we are expecting uh, the vast majority of, of the Hermes structures to be above grade. Um, rather than to, to go down and excavate. That's, we believe that's fine for, uh, you know, for uh, the types of loads that, that we expect to have in terms of, of the building and the structures. Um, it's a little bit complicated working around the existing foundations, but um, you know, we're, we're working through a couple of different options that we think are, are reasonable to, to accommodate that. So that said, I think, you know, philosophically, I think it's, it's, you know, it's been, been alluded to, but, you know, coming in, um, you know, to, to the brownfield site and, and giving it renewed purpose. Um, I, I think that, that you know, the, the value of that is not lost on us and, and um, tying into kind of the historical legacy of, of you, know, you know, the long historical legacy in East Tennessee connected to nuclear technology is, is important and one that we think connects us to that story and that, um, you know, that narrative moving forward in the future. Okay, uh, the next question kind of ties a couple of your slides together. Uh, ben asks, given that this is a demonstration reactor, how soon do you think its technology will be ready for commercial applications? Um, a very good question. So, so as I said, um, we believe that the big market opportunities for us are emerging in the 2030s. Um, and so for us, being able to achieve a, a full-scale commercial demonstration no later than 2030, uh, we view that as essential. We think that the timeline for Hermes um, supports that timeline and, and, and prepares us to be able to be ready for, for that market opportunity. Um, that said, I think, um, you know, I talked about the, the original identification of, of natural gas. Um, there's also an emerging sense um, as different utilities, um, including TVA, look to see um, what's on the horizon for, uh, for them after they retire their existing coal generation. And, and TVA, uh, TVA has announced that they're planning to retire all of their existing coal uh, capacity uh, by 20, uh, 2035. And so I think um, emerging in that landscape is, is also the opportunity um, in the early part of the 2030s uh, to, to have our technology go out to, to different markets to support um, you know, the need for reliable dispatchable power um, and to replace some of that, that, that coal capacity as it phases out in, in that period. Um, again, these are these are part of kind of the good dialogues that we have with with quite a few utilities and 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 looking for these opportunities. Um, that said, our cost targets are very aggressive, and we really are trying to dramatically reduce the cost of of nuclear technology. And it's 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 frankly pretty it's pretty hard for people to believe that that you know, um, you know that's that's going to be possible until we actually prove that we can do it. Um, but I have full confidence in a really wide array of different strategies that we're employing. Um, you know, there's, there's no one thing that we're, we're, that we're gonna do that's gonna bring the cost down to that level, um, but really a, a much wider array. And recognizing that if we, if we are, you know, if we're not able to, to realize that, that economic potential, uh, it will hurt us in our ability to uh, deploy our, commercial, our technology commercially. Okay, here's, a, here's another good commercial application question. So looking ahead for your potential 140 megawatt electric commercial unit, what are the scaling possibilities for a single infrastructure facility? So it really, the question is really, can more than one unit realistically be housed at the same location to allow utility scale development? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, so the, the important note here is that um, we know this is part of our roadmap. And so um, I'll say, we, we only actually made the decision to pursue the Hermes reactor about um, 16 months ago. <laughs> um, so prior to that, we had expected to pursue a full-scale commercial demonstration reactor um, uh, before making, the, making the, the observation that we could, we thought we could move faster with a smaller demonstration reactor uh, on the path there. Um, so it, in that process, actually, most of our, our engagement with, with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission 
was focused on the licensing approach, not for Hermes, but for the commercial reactor. And in, in that licensing approach, so a lot of the complication for multi-unit sites um, is related to, to the licensing basis and um, kind of the interfaces between multiple reactors at the site. So our, our, our regulatory strategy um, incorporated that from the very beginning that we'd have to develop a, a, a kind of a more flexible um, application of the safety case to, to actually allow for, for different numbers of reactors to be deployed at, at a single site. So that said, multi-unit efficiencies are some of the key early opportunities to, to bring down the costs as we start to learn to deploy these reactors in the future. And so um, that's definitely part of the, of the commercial strategy, but that's, that's really later on right now, um, being able to, to actually deliver um, you know, affordable nuclear heat is, is, is the near-term target and Hermes is, is um, the demonstration that will, will prove that. Okay, um, Hannah has a question. Are the local community members considered stakeholders in your deliberation and decision-making processes? So absolutely. Um, so um, you know, if, for us, um, we recognize that, that, that Kairos is coming into the Oak, Oak Ridge community. Um, our team um, already has you know, a number of strong connections to, to members of the community, um, but you know, you know, in, in the long term, um, part of part of the part of the reason for selecting the site is recognizing um, longer term opportunities for growth and expansion um, based on the capabilities uh, and opportunities in the region. And so, uh, that being said, making sure that um, we have a positive relationship in the community and that we're taking local community factors into our decision making is really important. It's part of part of. You know, part, part of the motivation for uh, initiating this series of, of engagements with, with, the, with, the, with the Oak Ridge community um, so that we can really understand um, what, you know, what the driving questions and concerns are of the local community and make sure that we're, um, that we're fully answering questions and, and addressing those concerns so that, uh, that, so that the people, our neighbors will feel, will feel comfortable with what we're doing. Okay. Uh couple more questions. Uh, Dave asked, where are the key markets where you see opportunity? Um, so I, I think that I've, I've covered this question um, in a couple of different sections, but essentially um, Kairos is focused on the U.S. electricity market. Um, I think in, in the early phase of that, you know, U.S. electricity market in the 2030s, in the early phase of that, we think that um, uh, opportunities for, uh, for coal uh, coal retirements uh, will be an important opportunity for us. And then in the longer term, um, uh, recognizing this opportunity to try and replace uh, 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 you know, a significant portion of the natural gas generation capacity as that, uh, as that current cap capacity starts to kind of age out of, um, you know, age out of cycle. Okay, uh, I think this will be our time for our last question as we're nearing the end. Uh, we'll touch on what you can do to ask questions in the future, but um, good question from Ben. What types of positions are you hiring for? How many, how might people apply and how soon do you expect to start hiring? <laughs> so, so good question. So Kairos is, um, we're currently just, just, we just hit 200 um, and we're, we're, we're setting up, um, you know, you know our, our growth will be pretty steady. Um, over the next couple of years, I'd say by the time Herbie's comes online, we'll probably be, you know, my guess is around probably 500 overall uh, staffing for the company. We're, we're, we're setting up uh, for that growth trajectory. Uh, it was mentioned early on that um, in terms of our, our you know, our, our firm commitments, um, uh, we believe that a staff on site of at least 55 is going to be necessary uh, to support the operations directly of Hermes. That said, I think there are, there's a broader set of activities at the site that, that, that we plan to do. And so I would expect that, that uh, our, our actual hiring will be um, uh, quite a bit higher, higher than that in terms of uh, where we expect to grow. Right now, our, our primary growth is, um, is in our Albuquerque facility as we've been, been bringing that facility online as well as additional uh, staff coming into um, uh, uh, our California site. So I think, we're still a little so we have we have some staff who's who's in Tennessee, including including you, 
uh, Marty, as well as some other uh, Kairos employees. And of course, during the pandemic, we've, we've figured out how to be more flexible and productive with, with um, uh, people working uh, remotely. Um, that said, Kairos is, is really focused on delivering hardware. Uh, and so um, you know, building up the, the, the staffing to support the actual deployment of the hardware makes a lot of sense. So um, our timeline for, for construction, uh, we're targeting to start 2023 for starting construction. So I think that the, the timeline for starting the, um, uh, the, the hiring in earnest in Oak Ridge will, will align with that. Um, and recognizing that you know, in the near term, um, there are opportunities for, uh, you know, for, for growth in, in Oak Ridge and, and East Tennessee um, and in connection with our other facilities to get trained and to translate those lessons to what we're ultimately gonna need for, for the Hermes site. Okay, thanks, Mark. A lot of and, good discussion. And I'll, and I'll plug, uh, we've got on our website, there's a, a good listing of uh, current posts on the careers page. Um, and that's, 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 that's moving quite quickly. So uh, you can always keep an eye out on there uh, for, uh, for specific positions of interest. Okay. Um, Ashley, can you just go over again how people can put uh, questions in the uh, platform? Yes, I'd be happy to. So I'm going to share a few links one more time with everybody. Uh, if we were not able to get to your question tonight, please feel free to put them into um, the submit a comment field in our virtual open house platform, which I just put that link in the chat again. And I'm also going to share one more time. We have, um, let me just share my screen real quick. We have a page on our website devoted to uh, Tennessee and Hermes, if you can see, hopefully, yes, you can see this. So I just wanted to let people know we will be having more virtual events. Um, if you would like to attend another one or invite a friend to come and learn more about Kairos Power and Hermes, we will be publicizing the upcoming events on this page. So please keep an eye on it. Feel free to come back and visit and register for another one. And we will be posting the information here as soon as it's available. We also have the link to our open house here. So this is a good page to have uh, bookmarked. And then we will also be sharing all of our upcoming events. Um, and another way to get in touch with us is by following us on social media. So I would be remiss if I did not mention, you can follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. And I'm putting those links in the chat right now as well. So um, thank you so much, everybody. Our team will be in touch uh, for everybody who submitted questions in the chat. If we didn't get to your question yet, please feel free to put your email address in and then we can connect with you separately offline. Um, and we will uh, happy to be here and answer any more questions that do come in. If something comes to mind after the fact, please feel free to reach out and we will get, get in touch. All right, Marty. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. Uh, and thanks all for joining. A really good discussion. That's very encouraging to get the engagement from the public. Uh, we hope you learned something tonight. It was sure good for us to, to meet more of you virtually. As Ashley said, we're going to have some uh, more events and I hope to get to meet you in person here but, you know, as, as, as time goes on. But just like to reiterate how grateful we are for the warm welcome we received, as Mike mentioned earlier, from, from the Oak Ridge community. And we look forward to being part of the community for a long time. So that's going to close us out for tonight. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good night.